Instagram or YouTube. How you doing? So week starting the 16th of May 2022. Just parked up um, not too far from the practice in Castle Donington. Um, coming to sort out some bits and pieces, checking with Cathy and start to work through this uh, list of things that we've got to do, ready to close the practice. And then after that, heading to Birmingham um, to prepare for the lung biopsy, which is now on Thursday the 19th. So today I'm going to be having some blood tests, an MRSA swab and a heart trace um, monitor or ECG. I can't remember um, which one ready for Thursday, which is bright and early, 7 a.m. So I believe in Manchester, about five-ish. And yes, it is here, finally. I've kind of parked it to the side. I haven't been too stressed about it. I'm just trying to really live in the present moment. Was doing well up until a few days ago. Started to feel a bit overwhelmed because it's really going to happen. I'd managed to not bury my head in the sand but was happily getting on with life uh, but it's just a pleasant reminder that this needs to be done and fingers crossed the results are the best that they can be so i've been back for a few days back in the midlands mum had to have some surgery last week so it's been spending some time with her my sister's been here as well so that's been nice up until now i hadn't felt too emotional about the practice I think because I've got so much more going on in a list of priorities, the, the lung biopsy, mum surgery, what will my biopsy results be? All that was above the list of things for me to worry or be upset about. However, when I've been going to the practice these past few days, especially on my own, I have yeah started to feel a bit sad, a bit low, the end of a chapter, the end of an era. I still feel like it's the right thing, but it doesn't make it easy. But when you close one door, often two or three more doors open. And I still believe that the journey that I'm about to go on from here on now is the right one. Really sad to see all the patients go. I've had some really lovely emails from everyone. Um, so I'm feeling extremely blessed, extremely grateful, which is also making it hard because it's a, it's a friendly reminder of the impact I made on the community and probably even bigger than I thought and imagined, which is great, but also sad because, because I'm leaving. One of the last times I'll be uh, walking down here. Well, I look sad in the rain. Really good to see Cathy. Um, I've actually woken up now. The videos before I hadn't been up too long, so I had that deep Barry White voice, but all good. Nice to see Kathy. We had a good chat, gave her a big hug, um, tying up some loose ends, all the admin stuff, all the fun stuff of running a business, getting my accounts ready to give to the accountant. So all good, feel a bit better for that. And we had a good chat about the future and what the future might hold. And I'll update you later when I've been to Birmingham, going to head back to mum's now, see her for an hour or two, and then back on the road again to Birmingham QE. Peace. Just touched down in Birmingham, just parked up in the car park. I've got a, a little bit of time to kill, so I'm just going to read for a bit, listen to a good podcast on the way. Um, I love making the most of these journeys. Um, sometimes I listen to music, but more often than not, I put on a good podcast. So the podcast got me thinking, it mentioned um, how you have a dark and a light side and that's something I've been working on a lot with all the personal growth, personal development stuff that I've been doing, things that I've been doing on my own, therapy, um, not so much with the coaching because that was more to do and help with the business side of things. However, being a chiropractor, you are your, your business. So there, it was interlinked slightly, but the work with the therapy, exploring those childhood traumas um, that I've had growing up to almost befriend or not own, own or befriend the, the dark side. Because until you can really harness that, it either controls you unconsciously 
I think. And that's when you become very reactive in in the outer world that, that you're living in. Or if you start to understand it to to how those traumas and those events might have affected you, you're more conscious with it. So you're more consciously aware of it. So then you can start to harness it and use it as an advantage and help you become more responsive. That's how I look at it with some of the stuff that's happened to me when I was a, a kid growing up. But even in this past decade, with the constant adversities and obstacle I've faced with my health issues, getting in touch with the darkness that I've had to experience has definitely helped with me being able to move forward and not get too emotional when, a, when entering new obstacles. Because when you become too emotional, that's when you become reactive. And this isn't me saying that you shouldn't feel your emotions, you definitely should, because when you start to hide your emotions, that's when problems start to occur and, you, and, and you're feeding into that unconscious darkness. But once you are starting to understand the relationship between light and dark, and there has to be a relationship and they're very closely interlinked, you can't have one without the other, life becomes a little bit easier even when you are faced with challenges and adversity. And it's not like you get news, for example, say um, the results of the, the scan and needed a biopsy that you think, oh yeah, it's completely fine. It's still a huge thing, but through the lessons that you've learned throughout the years, you have more tools at your disposal. So it makes it easier in being able to deal with it and work through it. And one thing that I've been really focusing on at the moment is most things in life are temporary, especially with myself, the pain that you experience while going into hospital. Um, I've been lucky that um, the surgery in January went really well and healing is going really well. So with time, it passes. And I know the same will be with the lung. We don't know the outcome. So that unknown uncertainty is one of the biggest worries and stresses. But I know it will pass, whatever the outcome will be, whether it be benign, it will pass and it will be dealt with through a different means to if it was say malignant and cancerous, but that's, that also will pass. And I think that how you look at adversity or obstacles that are, you're being faced with, it hugely depends on your perspective and mindset. And the good thing about those two things is that you cultivate those. It's no one else's responsibility. Yes, you might be influenced by um, loved ones or teachers or people that you spend a lot of time with, but those two things, so how you look at the world, so your perspective, what lens you look through, and then how you react to what information you are receiving is on you and it's entirely up to you. And also your mindset. Those two things are massive. And if you put time, energy, and effort into cultivating them to be better equipped to deal with unfortunate events, which happens, it happens to every single one. And your obstacle or adversity might be different to mine, but it's all relative to the individual. And I think these things need to be taught at a, a young age, either by the teachers or the parents of children, because life shit happens. Yeah? Life is full of these events. Life isn't easy. And that isn't me being negative, it's being realistic. But if you're going into life with these blinkers on thinking, oh, life is going to be smelling of roses 24 seven, the smallest adverse event in your life is going to throw you into a chaotic spiral. Um, especially if you haven't got the tools, the perspective, the mindset to deal with those things and bounce back even stronger. And that's the beauty. When you cultivate that better perspective, that better mindset, you will come back stronger from these adverse events. Again, doesn't mean it's easy, but I think it's a necessity to start to look what's going on within, especially within here, either to help you with something you're going through now, or just to better prepare you for when something happens in the future. And being prepared for these ill events isn't you having a negative mindset or being a pessimist, it's being realistic and you're taking control of what's happening in your life, knowing that there's a very high chance that something will happen in the future.